This video covers the installation of the uptake snorkel to the third generation Toyota Tacoma. We'll go over how to disassemble the different parts of the truck that you need to gain access to mount the snorkel, as well as the parts that come in the box and all the tools that you'll need to complete the job. When you unpack your uptake, this is what you're going to find in the box. You got your hardware kit. It's important to note that all the hardware has a, a letter ID on each bag, and I will reference that throughout the assembly and installation so that you know that you have the right hardware for each specific step to get this thing on your truck. You've got the body, the head, the aluminum tubing, you have a long piece and a short piece, the reducer, two elbows, your lower trim plate, your upper bird grill, and a hand nibbler. So now we'll go over the hardware kit that came with your uptake. You've got a handheld nibbler. This will be used almost like a mechanical set of scissors to cut the hole in the fender of the truck without needing an air compressor or anything crazy like that. These are nice because it lets you go slow and if you were getting off course a little bit, it's easy to correct. You've got the upper head bracket. This will interface, these two slots will go to the drip rail on the truck. The X will go to the top of the snorkel head. This bracket will be used for up, to, uh, up top roof racks as well as when you're running the snorkel on the truck with no roof rack. The Prinzu bracket will connect to their front windscreen as well. We'll come back and add that to the video uh, when those brackets are done. We're almost finished with those right now. You've got your banjo clamps, three inch and four inch. A Bigfoot sticker. Got a drill bit with a stop collar the upper hardware for the bracket that secures the top of the uptake, your fender mounting hardware, your lower inner fender bracket with the uh, nuts and bolts that go to this. This bag will actually attach to the banjo clamp threaded studs once you have them in place. And then the hardware for assume, assembling the body and the head and the uh, protective grills that come with it. So next we'll go over the tools and we'll mock this thing up, get it put together, and start putting it on the truck. It's a pretty basic set of hand tools that you need to install the snorkel. The only thing not pictured here that you will need is a cordless drill to drill the holes in the fender. But let's go over what I've got here. Shouldn't have to grab anything else along the way. I've got a 13 millimeter and a 10 millimeter wrench. An assortment of metric sockets. Specifically, you wanna make sure that you've got 10 mil, 12 mil, and 13 mil some Allen bits that I can use with a ratchet and an extension. Again, this is all metric. Um, specifically, you want your four millimeter, four millimeter and five millimeter. Pry tool, like a little trim tool, and a little 90 degree pick. These are pretty instrumental in getting the inner fender out of the truck without doing any damage. A set of L keys. I really only need the four millimeter out of this, but most of these things come in a set, so make sure you have one of these masking tape and silicone sealant. The sealant that we use is just an outdoor rated RTV silicone. Doesn't matter what color it is, you're never going to see it anyway. Just make sure that you have all this stuff before you start cutting holes in the fender and get a truck that you can't drive down to AutoZone until you're finished with your installation. So the last one is the nibbler and uh, we'll go over the use of the nibbler and the alternatives to this for cutting the hole in the fender to install the uptake when we get to that step. It seems like all the trucks that we've used to do the videos for the installation of the uptake, they're all modified, right? Like they're all lifted. Some of them had the inner fenders trimmed. Some of them had the uh, lower tub beat back to clearance for larger tires. 
There are videos and diagrams all over the internet of how to get off a set of inner fenders from a Toyota that's say brand new off the showroom floor. I have no doubt that out of the trucks that we've sampled because I've seen variants of a missing clip here or this one had a bolt or that one had a clip. All of the trucks that have been modified are probably a little bit different if, than what you have in your driveway if you have a brand new vehicle. If, if this part of the vehicle isn't enough, you can call us tech support or you can just Google some inner fender removal videos on uh, YouTube. I've, I've found a few really good ones out there. To get the inner fender out of the Tacoma, you're gonna need a little miniature pry tool and a 10 millimeter ratchet. There's a series of bolts and push clips up inside of there holding the inner fender in place. One of the push clips that you'll have to interface with will have this inner square head. You can't take this out like by turning it at all. But if you see those two little tabs there, you can, when it's in the fender, get up underneath it and push on those to release these clips and then pry them backwards. So I'm gonna take this side apart. Drew's gonna film it. And I'll just kind of work through and point where they're at and how to get this piece apart so that we can get uh, to the plumbing up in the inner fender. We've got the camera up on top of the tire pointing down, trying to show you the first 10 millimeter bolt that you've got to take out. It's along the bottom of the firewall area here, and it's just a 10 mil. It's, it's uh, basically, it's right behind the, the back leading edge of the inside of the back tire, or the front tire. You can get that one out first. That frees that little part up right there. Now we're gonna work up the outside of the inner fender and take out the remaining 10 millimeter bolts. Next, we've got five more 10 mils. Three of them are visible up the back side of the inner fender. And then two of them are kind of hidden up underneath the, uh, the ledge. So I'll pull out these three and then we'll reconfigure the camera to get a better look at the one above the tire. three are out so that part will be fairly loose now. Now follow along the underside of the edge with your fingers on the inside and you'll feel there's one right here and there's one right here and those are also 10 mil. So I got these two out. Now if you follow down the front, you'll see one right here. The, the inner fender's not attached to it. It's actually securing the flare to the, to the front snout here. But the next one below that you need to take out. And then if you follow this guy around the bottom, there's another one on the, the very bottom of it right there. Now that does it for the 10 millimeter bolts. There's one traditional Toyota two piece style clip up in here that we've got to get. And then everything else that's left is that strange square headed fastener that we showed you. So we'll try and highlight how we get those out without breaking them. Next, find the fins in your inner fender. Go to the top of that and then follow it in. And not the one that's holding your 
the strange rubber inner fender cover, but it's it's definitely stuck in the inside of the inner fender. It's one of those Toyota two-piece clamps, and you've got to pry the inside of it out of the way to free it up. Like that. So that clip was stuck in like that. And then we just got underneath it. And once you get that to pop up, these fingers will collapse and you can just pull this out of the way. That's the only one of those. Everything else is that, uh, that type that we showed you up close a minute ago. So we're gonna start working on those. Uh, let's see, you've got one there. That's two, three, four, five. Do you see another one back in there? One more right here. What is that one? All right, so the plus, the, the square-headed ones that we've got to release with the retainer, there are six of them. And we're gonna do your, our best to show you where these things are at, but it, it is really tricky to get a camera up in here. So I'll start with this one. Almost. One. That one shot out of there. So there's two. Man, the ones you can get to really make you look like you know what you're doing. There's that one. One of those clips. 
can build those holes too. The Uptake's designed to work with the factory airbox as well as the TRD Pro version airbox. It'll also work with the engine intake. Um, those three fitments specifically, the silicone parts that are in uh, the kit are sufficient to mate with those airboxes. Now I'm going to start to take apart the factory airbox to get it out of the vehicle so I can modify it and install our reducer. Now open the hood so you can get to the factory airbox. We'll take that out, make the modification that we need to make. And then we'll be ready to put on the reducer and put the factory airbox back in place. All right, we've got the inner fender out of the way so that we can work on this thing. Now we're going to take the factory airbox apart. Just lift that up, remove the filter. You will reuse the filter. And it looks like 12 millimeter bolts here. So there are two on the inside of the airbox, and then there's one more out here on the outside edge. We'll show you that one in a second. This one here, that's the last one. So can you see that at all? This would be your third one, and it's on the outside of the airbox. And if memory serves, you don't have to take this one out all the way. This is what we're looking for right here. So let's take this to the table. I'll show you guys how to pop this part off and shave off the little tab. You do have to make one minor modification to the factory airbox. We're gonna remove the shovel and we're gonna trim that tab right off so that our reducer will fit right over the ledge. This thing has a retaining clip here and another one over on the other side. You just gotta get underneath it it's not glued on or anything crazy like that. And just remove this guy. Now take an X-Acto knife and I'm gonna score across here a couple of times and shear this back and cut this off flush. See where the other fingers are? As long as we go back that far, that's plenty of space that we can put the reducer on and put the banjo clamp over it. This finger will keep that silicone reducer from going over there. That's the whole reason that we need to trim that out of the way.
And that's it. For this step, you need the reducer, where it's, see where it's larger on one end than the other, and get your hardware bag. Inside your hardware bag are some banjo clamps. There's three of one size and another one that is noticeably larger, and you know, that'll actually fit inside of there. You want the larger one. Just loosen it up by hand. Now just take the large end of the reducer and fit it over the throat of the lower intake box, the post that's sticking out here. And uh, it's a pretty tight fit, so you have to wrestle with it a little bit. But once you get it started, kind of get it to a workable spot and get your hand up underneath there and manipulate it. Maybe use a pry tool. I've got it started. Now I'm just gonna push it back and it will bottom out on those factory fingers, the ones that I said trim that piece back to there. So it'll bottom out right there. Now, just take it with the business end pointed at your face. Take the banjo clamp. Loosen it up enough that it'll slide over the top. I've got the nut of the banjo clamp pointed to the top. That would make it easy to access if I ever needed to get to it from the engine compartment. And then just take a 10 mil and tighten it down. should have a quarter to five sixteenths of an inch, like eight millimeters or so, of exposed thread, and that clamp will be tight enough to do its job. Now we're ready to go put the lower intake box back in the truck and bolt it back in place. You'll reuse the OEM hardware for this step. Just lift that box up out of the way. Align the reducer through the hole in the inner fender and then square the air box, box up back over the holes. Use a 12 millimeter to bolt all the bolts back in place. Drop back in the air filter. Align those tabs at the back. Push it back in. Pull your clips up. This installation doesn't interface with the uh, mass airflow sensor, anything crazy like that, and you don't have to change any of the plumbing inside the engine bay at all. In this next step, I'm going to tape off the outer fender. You do not have to do this on your install at your house, but 
um, I'm finding that these dark painted trucks are really hard to show you guys where we've marked the holes and stuff. So I'm going to put some green masking tape over the fender area out here so that as we manipulate this thing, get it in place and draw the holes to drill for mounting and to pass the plumbing through, you guys can actually see what we're doing. So this is what you guys will see throughout the video. I've just got masking tape put on here so that when I draw on this and I mark on it, you guys can see it. Sharpies are not going to show up really well in the video on the MGM paint on the truck that we're working on today. So before I do anything down here, I'm going to be ready to go up there and mount the connecting bracket that supports the top of the snorkel. Uh, we've got other video segments that cover without a roof rack or additional companies roof racks. This one has an up top alpha on it. So now we're going to interface with the front foot and install the upper bracket. So let me grab all that stuff. We'll, we'll put that on and then we'll be ready to anchor the snorkel, set it on the fender and mark the holes. Okay. So this truck does have the roof rack on it. If you look down in there, that's the front mounting foot for an up top alpha. I've got to remove those two bolts reapply silicone, put the bracket in, it'll snake under the front windscreen and set out here like this. That's where the upper part of the uptake will connect to. So I'm going to grab my five millimeter Allen wrench and pull this apart. If you guys I removed the old hardware. It's important to note that if you're installing the uptake with a roof rack, you want to leave the spacers that shipped with your roof rack in place. Do not supplement them with the spacers that came with the uptake. The spacers that ship with the uptake are for running no roof rack at all. And you don't want to change the pitch or the alignment of your roof rack. And our bracket sits on top of your mounting foot. So you shouldn't have to remove the spacers to get to it. This roof rack on this truck is just completely loaded down with gear. It's going to be hard for me to get the silicone gun down in here. So I'm going to take the new hardware out of the packet, apply the silicone to the threads of the bolts, install the bracket, put the hardware back in, and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Just grab the bolts, lock washers, and fender washers from bag H, the upper head bracket here. It will install to the truck and the, the bent tail will face outside of the truck. So I'll show you guys. It's going to be on the truck like this right here. I'm going to slide it under the windscreen and line it up over the slots in the feet on the front right corner of the rack. So I'm going to hold this in place. It may move. Yep, I'll have to move it out of the way. So now I want to take the replacement hardware and put a bunch of silicone on the threads to reseal the hole. I'm going to work that bracket up underneath the front windscreen, locate it over the foot, and put the bolt through the spacer, thread it back in to the factory bolt holes. So once I've got that one started, I'll do the same thing with the second one. underneath there. Put the second one in place. So you can see where we're at. Bracket sitting on top of the foot. Right now it's just kind of hanging out here at the front of the rack like that. And it is kicked out towards where you would be standing right now. So I just want to snug these bolts up. I don't want to tighten them so that I can adjust this later if need be. So I'll use that same five mil and I'm just going to snug up the front bolt here. I'll leave the back one loose. I've got it tight enough that it's flat, but I can still, I can still move it and articulate it around. That's going to help line up the hardware in it. So now let's go assemble the, uh, the head and the tube of the snorkel and we'll be ready to bolt it to the truck up here at the top and use it as a template to line up the, the holes in the fender. The head mounts to the tube through the holes that are on the side of the head. They'll align 
to the installed brass bushings on both sides of the tube. The head installs to the body. It'll only fit one way. You can't put it on backwards. And you want to slide the head on to line up where the uh, bolts will clearly go into the uh, brass bushings here. So right now it's sitting like this. So, and obviously it's pointing away from the, the back side of the uptake here. So I'll line up the hardware. This is the hardware from bag A. And I want to start both sides by hand and then tighten them up with a four millimeter Allen wrench. Each one of these is going to get a lock washer and a flat washer like that. And I'm just going to line up the hardware through the head, start those by hand. And I want both sides started before I tighten anything up. Once I've got them both started, I'm ready to tighten them with the Allen wrench. So now the head and body are one piece. We're going to locate the hole at the back of the head here. We'll grab the hardware, go ahead and mount it to the top of the truck, and that's going to let it swing down onto the fender. And because it's profile capture, it'll set just in the right spot for you to mark the holes. The hardware from bag I will go through the X slot in the top of the upper bracket into that brass bushing that I showed you on the top of the head. And this is a bolt, lock washer, and flat washer. And you shouldn't need any tools for this step because you're just putting this in to hold the top of the snorkel in place. So I'm gonna line up. Start the hardware there by hand. And hand snug here is good. So the snorkel should rest on the fender at this point. Now we can go and make sure it's in the right spot and mark the hole so we can drill it. With that upper bracket attached like it is, you can see it just mounted right there. The snorkel's just hanging on the truck right now. The profile is actually sitting on the fender of the truck. When you slide the snorkel up and push it into position there, it, it really only fits in one spot. You can see your clearance up your A-pillar, but it naturally rests in that one location there. And if you move it at all, see the gap open up? Now it's closed up. So, and I can let it go, it'll move a little bit like that, but when I push it, it just goes right back to where it's supposed to be. So now I'm gonna grab my marker and we're gonna mark the holes. You'll be marking three holes on the inside of the snorkel, as well as the main hole that you'll cut in the fender for the plumbing. All right, so I've got my marker. I'm just gonna push it back into place and you just watch it. It catches the contour of your Tacoma fender exact. So I'm holding it. I'm gonna mark the big hole first. Now I'm gonna mark the three mounting holes and I'll show you where those are as soon as I get them marked up here. So I move that out of the way. There's mount hole one, two, and three, and then the large hole for the fender. So I've got those marked in place. Now I'm gonna take the bolt out up here at the top so I can remove the snorkel from the truck.
you guys can really see the holes now. If I didn't have that tape on there, I don't think you'd be able to see these at all. The first one was really hard to do. So we'll be drilling a hole here, here, and here for the mounting. And we'll enlarge this hole by a quarter of an inch to the outside of the ring that you drew. And that's the hole that we'll actually cut for the snorkel. If you cut it to exact size, it makes it very hard to get the elbow to fit through the hole. So we want to come back and draw this and oversize it by like a quarter of an inch. So I just sketched the outside hole to be about a quarter inch bigger um, than the, the actual hole that we marked inside of the snorkel. Again, that's just for clearance on the silicone elbow. If you cut it at the exact size as the snorkel, it becomes a real bear to get the elbow up and mounted into the snorkel. It's nice to have that extra little bit of gap right there. So let me show you the holes that we marked on the back of the snorkel so that you know what you're looking for inside of the body. The uptake shipped to you with a foam gasket already installed, that's just there to create a barrier between the back of the uptake and the truck so that it doesn't damage the paint and clear coat around the outside edge of the snorkel if there's any vibration when the truck articulates off-road. Inside of here, you'll see the collar where the silicone elbow will dock, and then you've got those three holes on the back right there. Those correspond to the three holes that we marked right here. So I'm gonna drill a hole, obviously, at each of these three locations for my mounting, and then I'm gonna drill one that rests right on the outside edge of this lip right here so that I can get the head of my nibbler in and walk around the inside of the fender there to cut the, that bit of material out of the way. Bag J has the drill bit and the stop collar that we provide to drill the holes in the fender. You will need to install the stop collar to the drill bit. Take an eighth inch Allen wrench and just loosen up the set screw in the collar. Slide the drill bit in. You only need to leave maybe three eighths of an inch or so exposed. And tighten that guy up. That's just there to keep it from punching through the fender when you drill the hole. It becomes like a natural brake pedal that'll stop that when it goes into the fender. So you also need a cordless drill for this step. I'm gonna start with the three mounting holes and then I'll drill to the outside edge of this. I'll reposition the camera so you can see exactly where I line up. So I'll drill these first and then we'll come back and do that one. Your Tacoma fender is a really thin sheet metal. It drills really easy and it cuts even easier. This is not a difficult hole to make at all. Just line up the center of the drill bit over the marked hole. That one's out of the way. Now, I want to line up the outside of my drill bit edge to the outside edge of that secondary line that we drew. Now that's opened up enough I can get my nibbler in there and just start using it like a pair of hand shears to walk around and cut that hole in the fender. The hand nibbler that we include with your kit, if you can look at the edge, see the little tooth there? It's designed to just insert in that hole and then you squeeze it manually and walk your way around the circle and it'll, it'll cut a little bit of metal out. Every time you squeeze it, you're gonna hear it pop. So I'll set the camera up so I can get inside of here and then we'll just work our way around until we've cut the hole in the fender.
You can see that every time I'm taking a little chip out of it, it's pulling out like a 16th or an eighth inch little chunk of metal. And I'm just twisting it as I go to walk around to help it cut the actual circle. Okay, so I used the nibbler to cut the hole on the fender. I will tell you that, that putting the mask and tape on here so that you guys could see what I was doing did make this quite a bit more difficult because the mask and tape as I went around the hole wanted to bunch up in places and get stuck in the nibbler. That was a, a little bit more of a fight than I, than I think you have when you do this without the mask and tape on here. Um, the other ways that you can cut this, obviously they make, and I'll show you guys at the end of this video, they make a kit on Amazon, it's about 35, 40 bucks. It's got a nibbler in it that you can use in a cordless drill and it just walks right around. You could use an air saw. Uh, th those are the three basic ways that I think that you can really cut this hole and get a nice finished edge on it with no burrs. Using a jigsaw or something like that would be a little tricky on something because of the contour and the curve of the fender. So now that I've got the three holes in and I've got this hole out, I'm going to remove the mask and tape and, pr and clean this area where that adhesive will be stuck. And I'll show you guys how I seal up the edges to make sure there's no corrosion. So now I'm just going to use a, just a clear fingernail polish is exactly what it is. And I'm going to put it around the edges of the cut that we made as well as the holes and let that air dry for 10 or 15 minutes. It's just to seal up this outside edge where there's now raw metal. It's a pretty straightforward process uh, aside from a big bearded burly dude walking into a Walgreens and buying fingernail polish. That part was a little sketch. But just brush it around the, the inner lip there just to seal that. And I will tell you that this is an acrylic polish. I'm not the world's foremost expert on nail polish, clearly, but the acrylic did seem to adhere really well when I tried all the different kinds that you could do here. So I've got the, the main cut through for the plumbing, and then I'll just do the exact same thing here for the drill holes. And like I said, just let that dry for 10, 15 minutes till you come back and it's not wet. Then we'll be ready to mount the snorkel to the truck. If you look in the hole that we cut, you'll see this and I can move it with my hand. Let me shine a light in here and show you. There's a, a big foam plug in here and it's a seal to, to keep, if you're not running an inner fender, I'm assuming, to keep water from flying up to the back of the door. We do need to move this out of the way. It makes it a whole lot easier to get the, the top hardware started. So I'm just going to kind of maneuver this thing away up and out inside the fender and get it out of the way so that when I go to reach my hand up underneath the fender here to put the hardware together, I can actually reach this bolt. I've got it tucked down. I just pulled it out enough to tuck it up in the fender like that. That way I can put it back in when we're done. But if you look up in there, it really starts to open up that cavity where you gotta get your hands and your tools to tighten uh, the back hardware on the uptake. Grab the hardware from bag D. And we're gonna take the bolts and the fender washers and we're going to preload them into the open holes in the snorkel body. 
We've made those holes just tight enough to hold this hardware in place. It really helps not have to fight the hardware through the holes with the snorkel sitting on the fender. So I'll reposition the camera and I'll show you guys how I get these in. The two at the forward facing part of the snorkel are really easy because you can just reach right there and touch them. The one that's up here in the back corner is a little bit trickier. So I use a rat, uh, an extension with a five mil on it so that I can just drop it into place over the hole. And once I have it started, can remove the socket and then just push the studs through the hole so that it looks like that right there. I want to do the same thing with the other two locations. So I should have these three studs sticking out the back of the uptake now. They'll correspond to the holes that are in your fender. So grab the, the hardware for the head. We'll go anchor that to the truck and then we'll be ready to attach the snorkel to the fender. All right. So I'm just gonna align the three studs that are protruded here with the three holes in the fender. Just give them a little push to get them in the hole lined up and seated. And then I'm gonna attach my bolt back to the top of the head and it'll hold itself in place enough that we can now reach in and get the hardware through the back of the fender. The nylock flange nut that we include doesn't require any additional washers and it makes it way easier to put together on the back side of the fender because you don't have to fumble with a separate washer and nut. So again, this is the hardware out of bag D. Just grab the, the flange nuts after you've put this in and we'll reach up inside of the fender and get everything started by hand before we tighten it up. Now I'm just gonna take our three nylock flange nuts. I'm gonna reach up inside the fender, locate the backs of the studs of all three of those bolts and start that hardware by hand. Okay, so all three bolts are in. Up inside of there, you can see the nuts on the back. I just wanna take the 13 millimeter wrench and put it up inside the fender to hold it and then use a five mil out here to tighten that up. And as you do, it'll suck that snorkel down against the fender, pull out any perfections in the inner fender area and seat that foam that's on the back of the uptake against the fender to lock this thing in place and get a really good contour capture. So I got my five mil, I got my wrench just going to kind of go up into the fender and get everything tight. All three bolts in the fender are tightened up now. I'm gonna reach back up inside under the inner fender and put that foam plug back in place that we moved. That guy right there, don't forget to put that back. So I'm gonna do that next. And then I'll uh, adjust the top of the snorkel and tighten up that hardware up there. And then it's officially fixed to the vehicle. All that'll be left are a couple of brackets down below and some plumbing. All right. Once all that's tight, I've got the foam pushed back. You should have some play in this uh, X in the top of this bracket. You wanna push that until it's at the top of the X in that location there, facing forward. I'm gonna tighten that up with a four mil. That'll lock the top of the snorkel. It keeps the profile to the fender and keeps it far enough away that you can still reach up underneath here and clean the truck. I've got that bolt tightened fully into the top of the head. Now I'll just go back and tighten up the bolts for the mounting foot bracket. So just reach inside of there with a five mil and tighten those bolts down completely. So we're anchored down here, all this is tight. We've tightened this bolt up. 
We've tightened up the bolts to the feet of the roof rack. Now we'll go back to the inner fender of the truck and we're going to install a plus nut into a location up inside of here to anchor the lower bracket. Before we install the plumbing, locate this hole right here. So there's a rectangular slot and an angled slot above it and then there's a hole. In that hole, we want to install the M6 plus nut provided with your kit. That's going to serve as the anchor point for the lower bracket that will eventually attach to the banjo clamp to secure the inside of the plumbing of the snorkel. You'll use the hardware inside of bag E to manually install the plus nut into that factory hole. You can do this with a 10 millimeter wrench and a 10 millimeter socket. Take the bolt, put a fender washer on it, slide the wrench head through, put the other fender washer in place, and then tighten up the plus nut like this. Now go install this into the plus nut into the hole up inside of the fender and operate the ratchet and it'll compress this plus nut and spread it out into an X and lock it in place to give you somewhere to anchor that lower bracket. You'll insert the plus nut into this hole right here. You'll keep pressure on it and then you'll operate the head of a ratchet and torque it down until it eventually locks up and that'll set that plus nut in place so you can anchor your bracket. You'll pre-assemble the plumbing before you install it into the fender. It'll go in as one big assembly. You won't put it in there a piece at a time. And it fits together one way. You've got your small three inch pipe that'll slide inside one end of an elbow. That's gonna dock to your reducer. Then the longer section of pipe will go on the opposite end of that elbow with the final elbow going on up here, rotating around and going into the back of the uptake. So it's pretty important that you get the hose clamps on in the right orientation so that you can operate your ratchet or wrench to tighten everything up. I'll start on the end that's going to connect to the reducer. So that hose clamp needs to go on. If you're holding it like this, it would be on the right hand side facing down. And then install your three inch pipe about halfway in. Leave about an inch and a quarter of the pipe right here sticking out. The other hose clamp goes on the end and it should point straight down at the ground like this. You're going to attach a bracket to the threads of this hose clamp once everything's all bolted in. The long section of pipe goes into there. Finally, next hose clamp needs to feed on before you put on the elbow and then that elbow goes on like that. You can leave this loose. You'll be able to rotate this to help get the proper orientation of your pipe, but that is effectively how it's going to go into the fender of the truck. So I've got the piping assembled. I'm going to put it up into the fender. I'm going to rotate it up into place, aligning the silicone elbow into the back of the body of the snorkel first. Then we'll rotate this up and dock it to the reducer. If I start under here and just feed it up in, then I can get up here and direct it into the top of the snorkel by hand. kind of reach through and pinch that elbow so that it'll just slide right in. And once it's started, you can push it up into place and it should be fully seated inside the throat of the snorkel body like that right there. Under here, I've got to align that little section of pipe to the inside of that reducer. the bottom of it started now so I'll just rotate it into position 
and you'll feel that pipe start to slide into that reducer. There we go. So when you have it right, the elbow, if I move this clamp out of the way, the elbow of that, the end there is butted up flush against that reducer. And then we're going to loosen this clamp up and put it over the seam between those two and tighten that one down first. Okay, so I've got these two butted up against each other. I just want to loosen this clamp up enough that I can slide the clamp to split the distance and cover both seams where the pipe comes together with the reducer. So now I've got that banjo clamp over both those seams. I'm going to tighten this one down first with a 10 mil. When that's fully tightened, you should have about 3 eighths of an inch, maybe 10 millimeters of thread exposed. And you'll know that that joint is locked down completely. This one I don't want to tighten yet. I just want to loosen enough I can rotate it around. I need that stud pointed basically at the tire. You want it just about flat to the ground and then tighten that one up. And again, the same thing. I need 3 eighths of an inch, 10 millimeters or so thread exposed because we're gonna mount a bracket right here that anchors in and that's what keeps this bolted up into the fender of the truck. The last one is up at the back of the uptake. We're gonna tighten that one up too, but now you can kind of see why the orientation of those banjo clamps matters. If you had that rotated the other way, it would be so close against the fender, you wouldn't be able to tighten it with the ratchet. When you rotate the plumbing up inside of the inner fender, you'll need to slide the elbows back and forth to get the final adjustment and kind of rotate them around so that they dock into the back of the snorkel and connect to the reducer at the factory air box. It's important that the hose clamps are installed like we showed you earlier and that you leave them loose enough that you can manipulate this to get the plumbing to install up inside the inner fender. Now let's install the lower bracket. I need hardware bag F and G and the lower inner fender bracket, 10 millimeter ratchet, and a five millimeter Allen to install this bracket. Your inner fender bracket has two slots on it. One of them is noticeably larger than the other. The short slot's gonna go to the fender where the long slot's gonna align to the exposed studs of your banjo clamp. Pull your hardware out of bag number F, <laughs> bag letter F, right? <laughs> Pull your hardware out of bag letter F. Put your lock washer and fender washer on. Slip it through the slot. Attach the spacer to the back. Line it up to your plus nut and just start the threads by hand. Mm -hmm. 
the fender washer and nylock from bag G. You'll rotate this up, align that slot to the exposed threads of your banjo clamp, and install that like that. Once you have both of them started, tighten the bolt to the fender first, and then tighten this up. This is a five millimeter, this is a 10. Once the bracket's secured, the bottom of the uptake is, is pinned in place inside the fender, and all of our connections are up above the stamp sheet metal of the fender, so that if your tire articulates or anything crazy and slams into this, it's still not going to hit your snorkel parts. Next, you're going to use your sealant to make a gasket inside the uptake between the collar and where the silicone elbow docks in place. So just fill that entire cavity there and then wipe your finger around to make a seal. Make sure that it seals 360 degrees around the inside edge. and you should be good to go. <clears throat> the reason we use a silicone sealant to fuse the elbow and the snorkel body together instead of like a mechanical clamp, the truck will articulate off-road and it can cause stress points between the tubing of the snorkel and the actual snorkel body. Using a silicone like that seals it up, makes it flexible enough that you don't ever have to worry about it, and leaves it removable should you ever have to pull the snorkel off to do service to the fender of the truck, body damage, things like that. We're going to use the hardware from bag B to attach the upper bird grill to the top of the snorkel. You need this hardware and a four millimeter Allen wrench. Each one's going to get a bolt and a flat washer. Just align it to the threaded insert. And kind of like everything we do, start both of them by hand before you tighten anything up. Once those are tightened in place, we can go down and install the gasket to the lower cover and put that in. Before you can install the lower plates to the bottom of the snorkel body here, you're going to need to install the rubber gasket that we ship with your kit. Just peel the backing off of it to expose the adhesive. Leave it face down on the surface. This aligns to this gasket. They are both shaped exactly the same. Line your holes up. And then work your fingers over the back to set that gasket. This gasket's pretty important. It serves as a lower seal on the clean-out cover on the bottom of the snorkel. So make sure that you don't forget to put this on. Once you got that guy, your cosmetic cover We'll go over the top of that and align to there. You need the hardware from bag C and a four millimeter Allen wrench, and we're ready to put that cover on the snorkel. The holes on the lower clean out cover will align to the brass inserts inside of the snorkel body. Just line them up and then one at a time, install all the hardware by hand. There are six bolts and every bolt's gonna have a flat washer.
Once you've got all six bolts started, go back and tighten them up the same way that you would do your lugs on your truck. I'm going to tighten up the first one, and then I just bounce all the way down below it, tighten that one up, then go over. Rotating the order that you tighten this hardware in ensures that it, it bolts down evenly and flat, that you don't get it in any kind of a weird bind and cause it to fail a seal along the outside edge. You can remove this cover whenever you want to perform a clean out. The snorkels will collect rocks, gravel, dead bugs over time. It's nice to be able to pull this plate off and clean out the, the interior of that thing from time to time. If you're relocating a ditch light, you're gonna need the hardware found in bag K, as well as the drill bit, stop collar, and plus nut setting hardware that you use for the lower inner fender bracket. You'll wanna align your ditch light to the top of the snorkel. You're gonna drill a hole up here and install a plus nut, but you wanna make sure that you get this in the right location that it's not sitting over so far that it, if you open the hood, it's gonna hit. The benefit of ditch light brackets are they articulate with the hood and the snorkel is stationary, so it's really important that you get your alignment here correct for this part of it. If you follow down the line of the hood, as long as we stay back behind that area there, we're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna mark my location where I'm gonna drill this and then we'll drill it and install the plus nut. I've got the hole marked, now I'm gonna use the drill bit and the stop collar and I'll just drill that pilot hole. That hole's where we're gonna install our plus nut. Now I got my wrench set up with my plus nut bolt flat washers. Just push that down into the hole. And operate that ratchet to set the plus nut. It'll bite down against the body of the snorkel. And that's gonna provide your threaded area to tighten up and mount your ditch light. All right, I got my plus nut set. So now I'll back the hardware out. And now you've got a threaded insert on top of here to mount a ditch light to. It should go without saying that you need to seal this up with silicone before you mount your ditch light. It is a snorkel and we want it to be fairly waterproof. So I'm gonna use the same sealant we've been using for everything else. And I'll apply enough of it in there to make sure that when I mount my ditch light, the threads and around the, the base of the plus nut are all sealed up. The hardware that we provide to mount your ditch light to the top of this is M6. It's 16 millimeters. If that's not long enough and you need to source more hardware, just make sure that you get M6 by one. Anything else is gonna cross thread and spin that plus nut. So drop that into place. Start by hand. Then I'll tighten that up with a four millimeter Allen wrench. I've got the ditch light installed to the top of the snorkel. Now we'll just pop the hood, fish the wire back under and reconnect it to its original plug. All right, snorkels mounted, plumbing's installed, ditch lights relocated, everything's all tightened up. All that's left is to put back in the inner fender. So grab the hardware, the tools, all the fasteners and put your inner fender back in in the reverse order that you use to disassemble the truck.